Hello, everybody. We are Baldwin's management team. We're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves and how we contributed as a team to Baldwin's success. To begin, my name is Matt, and I oversaw the research and development as well as assisting in marketing. I work to keep each of Baldwin's segments competitive with regard to the performance and size. I also work diligently to reduce material costs. When marketing issues arose, I helped our marketing manager adjust prices for marketing budgets accordingly. My name is Hannah and I'm Baldwin's marketing and production manager. My goal was to ensure prices remain competitive, achieve sales and promotional budgets, and provide accurate forecasts. In addition, I was responsible for production schedules as well as investment in automation and capacity to maximize efficiency. My name is Claude May and I was in charge of the finance department. My job was to increase capital and market presence as well as overseeing the stock prices. I manage both long-term and short-term debts, as well as accounts receivable and accounts payables to ensure cash flow. My name is Pardeep. I manage the HR department as well as total quality management. I oversaw the training, recruiting, and productivity of the staff to minimize employee turnover and overtime costs. Additionally, TQM was utilized to minimize expenditures as well as enhance overall efficiencies of the internal processes of our company. In an attempt to gain competitive advantage, we chose to employ cost leadership as our strategy. We wanted to achieve cost leadership through economies of scale. We knew to do this, we would have to efficiently grow our internal operations while reducing input costs, fine tuning our production design, and quickly capturing significant market share. After the completion of our first round, we analyzed the competition's pricing and realized that in order to achieve cost leadership, we needed to further decrease our costs and our prices. With a focus on the low-end segment, we opted to make adjustments. Inspired by the sales from the prior year, we significantly increased automation, bought excess capacity, and made R&D improvements. We hoped that these investments would position us well to claim more low-end market share. Unfortunately, we did not adjust our prices proportionately and lost significant market share to the competition. Our decisions landed us an emergency loan going into round three. Our $60 million plus emergency loan was a result of the overly optimistic investment in capacity, automation, and our production schedule. We failed to reduce our low-end segment prices proportionally to our production schedule and competition. Our product prices were relatively high and became unattractive as our competition had listed their products in their low-end segment at a lower price. This allowed, allowed our competitors to capture more market share, leading to lower sales in our company. This caused us to produce more products than we actually sold. As a result, our costs increased significantly as we were forced to pay for excess capacity, inventory carrying costs, and high interest rates. While this was a setback for us, through careful financial management, we were able to recover and continue growing in round four. We issued long-term debt and managed to reap the benefits of our over-investment in automation and capacity in the following rounds. Team Baldwin's strengths are listed as follows. Our contribution margin allows us to achieve a good return on sales. Contribution margin shows the amount of revenue available after variable costs to cover fixed expenses and provide profit for the company. On the side is a screenshot of our contribution margins from round four. Throughout each round, we were able to maintain a high contribution margin on our products. With the exception of Bold, which is in our performance segment, Team Baldwin was able to keep our contribution margin over 30% for the other market segments. We view this as a strength because the contribution margins displayed is a result of our internal business processes, which demonstrates efficiency and profitability on our products. Another strength is having low variable costs. Throughout the entire simulation, our variable costs were lower than our competitors. Our investments in R&D and automation in all four rounds allowed us to lower both material and labor costs. As you can see in the screenshot, Baldwin's variable costs accounted for roughly 55% of sales, whereas our competition's variable costs accounted for 60-65% to 65 of their sales. 
We consider this a major strength because we were able to lower our costs in each round, although the internal and external environment, as well as consumer demand, were constantly changing. Team Baldwin was able to find the right balance between our investment in R&D, automation, and TQM, which helped us to reduce our variable costs. Our biggest strength in this entire simulation was the fact that we overcame our emergency loan in a span of a year. Given that our loan was over $60 million, our team decided to sell our excess capacity, be more attentive and aware to our prices, and slowly increase our investments in automation. By doing this, we were able to reduce our labor costs and that helped us to focus on our cost leadership strategy. Many of Team Baldwin's weaknesses are listed below. In the beginning, our team was overly optimistic in our sales forecast. That caused us to increase our production because we thought we were going to sell a high number of products. However, we did not pay much attention to our price in round two. If we adjusted our pricing and made it more competitive, we would have been able to sell the products that we produced. Being overly optimistic led us to believe that we were going to sell a lot of our products, therefore we bought additional capacity. However, that ended up hurting us as we had to take out an emergency loan. That brings me to our second weakness. Our heavy investment in automation and capacity in round two reduced our profits tremendously. We did not sell as much as we produced, which affected our ability to recoup from our excessive spending. Our emergency loan put our company in a hole, causing our stock price to decrease as well. As shown in the graph below, you can see that between year zero and year one, Baldwin stock price increased. However, between year 2021 and 2022, which was the year we received an emergency loan, Baldwin stock price plunged down nearly to zero dollars, demonstrating the financial strain on our company. We tried to make improvements and closed the end of round four at $22.96 per share. However, our company still had the lowest stock price. Another weakness our team had was the overutilization of our plant. Although we utilized all of our capacity, the overutilization of our plant increased our costs in which we did not account for and reduced profits. Our plant utilization was over 100% in all of our market segments except for high-end, which exceeded our ability to supply the products to our consumer. Because of this, we scheduled overtime, which drove our costs. Throughout the entire simulation, our team struggled with gaining customer accessibility in our products. In round one, we did not invest much into our sales and promo budgets as we did not know the impact it had on customer accessibility. In round two and three, we were unable to fully invest in our sales and promotional budgets because we had small margins and we were looking to pay our loan back. In round four, we were able to slightly increase our investment in our sales and promo budgets. However, we were still unable to gain customer accessibility. Looking at the balance scorecards throughout the rounds, we were able to get a sense of where we stood in certain functions of our company in relation to our competitors within the industry. Round one was one of our highest rated rounds in terms of successfully attempting to achieve our strategy. We looked to start implementing our strategy of cost leadership early in the competition. We strive to have scale efficient plans to reach a certain level of production and also reach economies of scale. Our internal business processes were successful in complementing our strategy through the combination of having controlled overhead costs and having access to capital for investments. It allowed us to create a dominating presence in our share of the market and led us to early profitability. In round two, we began to emphasize high employee productivity and with our results from round one, we purchased excess capacity with the assumption of having optimistic sales forecasts. We also heavily invested in automation to attempt to penetrate the market, but our prices were not adjusted accordingly. We believed our pricing strategy from round one was successful, and as a result, we made minimal changes without taking our expenditures and the competition's prices into account. Some of the heavy expenditures we incurred included increased automation costs along with increased R&D costs to, therefore, to decrease size and increase performance of our sensors to ultimately attain the ideal set of products. All of this dug us into a hole in which we started off with in the third round. Round three was considered our state of emergency round due to incurring an emergency loan. 
Although our goal was to demonstrate cost leadership, our emergency loan slowed our progress in achieving and maintaining our strategy. The scorecard from round three forced us to shift our focus to a temporary state of recovery where we significantly needed to issue equity and both long-term and short-term debt to stay afloat. We couldn't afford the necessary process modifications to lower our manufacturing and internal costs, and in, in turn, we were unable to be as aggressive on our pricing as our competitors to maintain a cost leadership position in the market. However, looking forward, round four became our recovery round where we looked to tighten cost controls in order to get a grip on our expenses so we can increase profits and our market presence once again. With the use of research and development and total quality management, we were able to assess and reduce material and labor cost while enhancing our products as well as our internal business processes. We were able to utilize our plant efficiently while also minimizing stock out costs and inventory carrying costs. Overall, our internal business processes increased by threefold from round three to four, and this became the round to put us back on our strategy track. For our market segment overview, we placed a heavy focus on bead, which was in the low segment market. Our strategy, which was cost leadership, did not pan out as expected due to our need for an emergency loan. In comparison to others in the market, our prices weren't low enough. In round one for bead, we had the highest cost for a product in that segment. Our prices remained constant for the next round. We were able to build customer awareness and accessibility. However, we experienced a huge plunge in the decrease in units sold, which in turn decreased our market share down by 8%. In conjunction with many other factors that were explained by Matt, we were unfortunate to re experience a visit from Big Al and had to get an emergency loan. For the next round, round three, we focused on recovering from the issuance of the emergency loan that we received and continued to strive to implement our strategy of course leadership for our product bead. In this third round, we were able to decrease our price down to $5.90, which now brought us to $18.59. We used this round to repay our debts, increase the units sold, and work to maintain a somewhat stable mean time before failure for the product. We were also able to bring our market share up to 16%, which was up now 9% from where it was in round two. Our product bead was still at a 100% for customer awareness, but took a plunge on customer accessibility. In round four, we made a complete comeback and received the funds that we needed. Bead was able to sec secure the market as the second lowest cost for a low end segment product. We increased customer accessibility and units sold and took also a slight increase in market share. We managed our material costs and adjusted by placing an emphasis on everything around bead to ensure that production costs were low in order to reduce selling costs. With respect to our current position and the circumstances we faced, we have learned what to do and more importantly, what not to do. As a team, we've collectively discussed tactics that have proven successful and would be employed going forward. These tactics include utilizing the TQM system to create a more lean process, tempering sales forecasts with caution, and incremental investments in process improvements. If given more time, we would be able to fully implement our cost leadership strategy. We were set back by the emergency loan in round two, but made nearly a full recovery by the fourth round. Due to the condensed time frame, of the simulation, we were not able to truly reach our cost leadership potential. If there were more years of the simulation, there are several strategic steps we would take. In year one, we would begin incremental increases of automation for traditional and high-end segments. We saw excellent results from the automation we incorporated thus far. It has proved to be a worthwhile investment for lowering future costs. In year two, we would increase the promotion and sales budget to maximize consumer awareness and accessibility for all segments. One of the areas we struggled with was improving consumer accessibility. 
Going forward, we would like to dedicate a much larger portion of our investment budget towards improving accessibility. In year two, we would also like to focus on R&D for performance and size segments. With tight funds nearing round four, we focused our resources on revitalizing our traditional and low-end segments. By what would be round six, we feel that our financial state would allow us to gear more attention toward improving these segments. In year three, we would reassess our performance and size segments to consider elimination as needed. If they did not respond well to R&D improvements, we would then consider eliminating the one that showed worse performance. While the length of the simulation was shortened, Team Baldwin regained significant traction in round four. Baldwin was on path to truly achieving cost leadership. Several more rounds would have given ample time for Baldwin to flourish and truly establish their place in the market.